first I'd like to uh, Coach Skeet and TSU. Um, I think she's um, has put together a really good group of young ladies to um, compete in the SWAC. Um, I think they've had a challenging schedule, um, non-conference, to try to get them prepared for that. And there's no quitting those kids. You know, those kids had more offensive rebounds than they did today. Uh, we used to turn people over 30, 40 times, and it was under 30 for them. Um, Again, they had some really good looks and, and did some things really, really good against us. So I have no doubt that they're going to show well in the conference. And Coach Keith's a, a really good person, really tough-nosed coach. He knows all about winning, and they'll have an opportunity to uh, do well in the swag. Um, I thought we came out today and upheld the standard. Um, um, I told the young ladies about the Arkansas Pine Bluff game, um, winning at uh, Arkansas. And um, how I thought Arkansas played a really good game, but they didn't uphold the standard of who they are. Um, so we wanted to use that as an example of just upholding the standard of doing what we're supposed to do every single time. You know, being the toughest team, um, upholding the culture of playing hard and having the most energy every time we step on the floor. And uh, I thought everybody um, embodied that today. And um, some of us did a little extra like Malia did today and just wanted to showcase a little bit more of, of who she is and what uh, other parts of her game that she can be able to play is not just the three, is not just driving, she can pass it and, and do some other things. I'm really excited for her um, to get an opportunity to play more minutes and then um, try to get into uh, the rare form that she used to playing in. Coach Emily, let me coach you first. What are your thoughts on Kids Day, Education Day, and all the screaming kids today? Man, it's tremendous, tremendous job, I'm telling you. Um, we have over 3,000 little ones today. I call them all little ones just because my five-year-old is one of them. But a uh, tremendous job by everybody in our marketing department and um, <clears throat> um, ticketing department, just getting those little ones out here and, you know, having a great time. The thing I do love about this is we kept it at a, a local team, so now they get a chance to see TSU and also us. Um, next year we want to try to be able to do it and have a Houston Christian or somebody like that and I always keep it with a local team. I think that will draw well. And the kids get an opportunity to see both teams. Um, because, again, when they're cheering, they just cheer for the baskets. They don't know about each team and things like that. But it was a tremendous opportunity for them to come, and we really appreciate them being here. And all the hard work for everybody that, that uh, put in to be able to help them be here, we really thank them for that. Uh, yeah, piggyback to what he said, it's just very exciting when it comes to the games. Um, the, the little meet and greet afterwards is really exciting also, just um, by the little kids just looking up to you and just excited to see you play. Hey, Coach, Joy now um, eight games in. How do you feel the team has gelled as a unit and also their ability to pivot and adapt in game situations? You know, the one thing I love about it is we don't have any locker room issues. We don't have any traveling issues. We don't have any um, issues at the apartments. We don't have any outside distractions. And, you know, when you judge that off of your team, that means your culture is doing what it needs to do. Everybody's embodying that. And they're self-policing themselves and taking care of things. Excuse me, as far as the court, I think we've been having the opportunity to be able to fight through a little bit of adversity and be able to push through and do the things necessary to be successful. Um, sometimes it take a little screaming and yelling in the in the huddle to be able to get them to understand the importance of holding up the standard every time. But I think we're, uh, we're right where we need to be. Um, again, when you're talking about where we're going, we're, we're right there. We're right there. And also after eight games, what aspects of the defense have you seen the most improvement in? Um, the most improvement, I think, has been the consistency of just getting up there and wanting to guard. Um, we're still having some breakdowns on denying. We're still having some breakdowns on guarding on the ball every time. Um, so it's some things like that. But the willingness to get up there consistently and try, that's the thing I'm most proud of because that hadn't dropped off. We're always getting up there, no matter if you get beat or if you don't get beat. Everybody's having the opportunity to get up there and stay consistent at doing that. And if you can stay consistent at doing that, you're going to improve. Malia, how comfortable are you eight games in your huge career? How, how do you feel? Very, <coughs> sorry. Very comfortable. This was my performance and also just being able to gel and get to know my new teammates. Coach, um, 
today was one of those days where you got off to a quick start and you didn't have to like call a timeout before the media timeout and just let the game get into a flow. How much better are you feeling with that situation, with the team adapting to, all right, balls up, let's, let's go? Yeah, you know, I feel really good about that because we have a veteran group. You know, we have, you know, juniors, seniors, fifth years, those kind of kids on the floor. So they just need instruction. And sometimes they just need to just get in each other's face and be able to say, okay, I'm not upholding myself to the standard. I'm not upholding myself to my, uh, confront myself on what I need to do and demand it more from myself. So that's why I don't feel the, the nerve, the urge to, you know, want to call a timeout early and be able to change stuff and all that kind of stuff because, again, at the end of the day, they still have to play the game. You know, coaches that do that, hopefully you can get them refocused and things like that. But most of the time, if you have a, a good point guard on the floor like we have with Naya and we have veteran people like Malia and uh, Bria and Layla and Cam and all those kids who's been through those wars before, they understand that. So we don't have to uh, burn the time out to try to get them refocused on things like that. Um, the thing we want to do is always come out and jump on, on, jump on people, you know. That's why – I've always gotten calls about why do you press at the beginning of the game? Why don't you just let it come to you and things like that? And I was like, that's not my life. My life has always been about trying to prove yourself, always digging yourself from out the bottom. It's always kicking in the back door. It's always every single day of trying to be able to show everybody I belong. So, again, at the end of the day when we step on the floor, it's, it's we're going to do everything we can to be able to show we belong, we fit, we're here to stay, and we're going to dominate you. At the end of the day, it's not about trying to get into a rhythm for anybody else. It's about trying to be dominant and just destroy whoever it is that we're playing. To both of you, the whole team contributed to the win today. What is the vibe and the energy of that bench? Happy, 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 happy. <laughs> you know, because again, um, around the country, uh, a lot of people are losing these games. You know, Ole Miss lost to Southern Miss. You know, Arkansas Pine Bluff beat Arkansas. Um, I could go on and on. Gonzaga just beat somebody. I can't remember. Uh, beat Stanford. You know, again, so, again, when you have these games, you have to celebrate them because they're so hard to come by. Wins in the college Division I level are so hard to come by. It's so much preparation. It's so much time you have to put in. It's so much trust you have to give to these young ladies to be able to go out and perform, especially on top of their day. They're in finals now, so they're finishing up classes. and you know, So getting them to refocus and be able to put one thing in this bottle, another thing in this shelf, another thing on that bed, and to be able to say, okay, I'm going to focus up and do what I need to do, that's really, really hard, especially today. Then you talk about in Houston, where there's tons to do and tons of places to go. You know, so we celebrate all the victories, man, because they're hard. They're so hard to come by. Speaking of hard to come by, going the road again, yes. your thoughts on these next two games? Dog fights. You know, so again, just looking forward to, you know, UTSA was one that uh, overtime game, we ended up winning by one or two last year. Um, uh, luckily, I think uh, the, the young lady who scored the 40, 39 points on us, I think she got hurt early. I'm not sure if she's going to be playing or not. Uh, got hurt last year. Not, you know, any ill will on them. But, again, it's going to be a dog fight, especially at their place. They have a veteran group. Karen, who's a dear friend of mine, who's a hard-nosed coach, who understands everything about the game, is going to scout us. They're going to know our plays. We're going to know their stuff. And it's all going to be about players over plays. Again, that's what it's getting down to. Same thing at Washington State, players over plays. You know, the scouting is just really, really good at this level. When you're talking about people understanding where you are, what you got to do on the floor, who's going to reverse the ball, who can shoot it in the paint. People going to play percentages and things like that. So it's going to be a really, really tough game at UTSA. And we're going to do everything we can to come out on top. Thank you, Coach. Gotcha. Thanks, Coach. I got you. You know it.